Okay, my people, we are back. Let's do a, a small example here on practicing uh, calculating our chi-squared statistic. So uh, we do have um, a goodness of fit example here. How can we tell? Well, the question is, are babies equally likely to be born on each day of the week? Notice uh, it's a categorical variable. Uh, because there are days of the week and we do have seven choices. And we had 800 people that were asked on that day of the week uh, what day they were born. And this is what we discovered when we asked all 800 people. This was our observed readings. We had a lot of people, uh, not too many, were born on Saturday. That's unusual. And um, we had, let's see, the most was Thursday and Friday. Huh. So um, some of you might be thinking, you know, in this case, um, it's supposed to be um, somewhat random. If it was just random, you know, equally likely, um, we would have a one-seventh chance on being born on any particular day. Well, this is not the first person to study this because if you understand the life of a doctor, the doctor doesn't want to work all seven days of um, the week. That would be quite exhausting. So um, if you ever heard about women being induced before, so sometimes doctors steer patients into giving birth, um, not on the weekends. So notice um, we have quite a few less on the weekend here or Saturday and Sunday. And uh, most women spend two to three days in the hospital the doctors is usually the ones that have to get them out of the hospital. They have to go back a few days later after they've been tended to uh, for a few days and then uh, clear them to go back home. So you can imagine if a woman was born on Thursday or Friday, let's take Friday, for example, and if things go well at the hospital, then they'll be back around two days later to kind of release them. So doctors going back to a hospital to release their patients doesn't take very long. They're just kind of checking up on them. They are technically working on a Sunday, but it's not um, as, uh, you know, ruling as, you know, giving, um, delivering a baby. So what is going on here? So we are going to calculate the chi-squared test statistic. Well, we're going to use this formula. I put it in a table format. This is going to help a lot of you at first to calculate these very specific uh, contribution values in here. And then we have a grand total at the very end. Ms. Keys, you already showed us how to use a calculator, how to do all this, but yeah, not everything's gonna be a four-step process. We wanna be able to, to calculate specific chi-squared contributions for any day of the week in here. So how do we do that? Well, let's do the old school formula. Let's observe minus expected. Well, there we go. Observed, we got 116 minus the expected. Uh-oh, what's the expected? Well, keep in mind, the equally likely is uh, there's seven days in the week, but there's 800 people. So if I take 800 and divide it by seven, that gives us our official expected value. That's going to be 114.285. And notice if they are equally likely in all seven days, all of these numbers are going to be the same. And notice if you add it up, uh, 114.285 uh, times uh, seven, you're going to get 800. So those are all the expected counts. And I cannot stress this enough. We are never going to be using uh, proportions um, in this formula, we're only using the counts. So we have the observed counts, expected counts. Keep in mind, the expected counts do come from the proportions, but we're actually using these values in here. So what do you do? Well, you subtract 116 from the expected count, then you square it, and then you divide it by the expected count of 114.28 five, seven, and so forth. And what did we get? We get something very, very small. Well, what is this? This is not a probability. This is the chi-squared contribution for just Mondays. And notice, 
since these two numbers are really close to one another, we are going to be getting very uh, close numbers close to zero. The numbers we're going to have the most contribution are the numbers that are far away from the expected in here. So if I use my calculator and I enter all of those observed counts in list one, all of the expected counts in list two, and then use my calculator, um, stat, go over to the tab where it says test, scroll all the way down to the goodness of fit, and then prompt in list one and list two, uh-oh, degrees of freedom. How many degrees of freedom do we have in here? Well, we have degrees of freedom of six because it's one less than the number of categories or choices. So in this case, we have several contributions that I can see at the very end. So this is 0 0.025. The next one is 0.12. The next one is 0 0.825. And it seems to seem to be getting a little bigger each time. This is 1.20. What's the next one? So this is 1.64 in here. The next one should be the biggest. And this is going to be, oh, we just took a big jump. 10.28 right there. And the last one is going to be uh, fairly large as well. The last one is coming out to be uh, point three, four, yeah, three, four, five. So the grand total of all those values right there is 14.45. This is the official chi-squared statistic. That's that value right there. And then notice, if we were to find a p-value, the calculator does that for us, the p-value using a calculator would be, um, I got what? I got uh, the p-value is 0 0.024, which is fairly small. So if we were fighting against alpha, which is 0 0.05, we would be rejecting the null hypothesis. So that is a little bit more examples on how to calculate a chi-squared uh, statistic.